<coughs> London Road and Culloden. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'll get there. Get going then. Right, we're on our way to Urquhart uh, Castle. And the weather's not brilliant. But Very heavy rain, isn't it? It's really heavy rain. And uh, you might not come round, you said. No, well, Poppy can't go round, can she? No. Anyway. So I might stay in the van with her. Cause yeah. You're going to have to use the GoPro in um, water mode, aren't you? Water as you call it. No, waterproof mode. Waterproof mode. Yeah, full action cam mode. Otherwise, it's going to get wet. The sound might not be as brilliant. No, so you probably wouldn't hear what I was saying anyway. You're going to have to use the uh, camera's mics, aren't you? Yeah. They're not bad, we'll see how, I mean, comment on it later, but uh, see how the sound sounds, sound sounds? Something like that. Anyway. Tickets for ten o'clock. Just along here. Yeah. Just along here. Arriving at Urquhart Castle on the left. Plenty of space here then. You're coming with us then? Well, it's not raining that hard. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> really want to miss out. No, Poppy can't come with us, unfortunately. So she's tucked up safely in her crate. Yes, it's been here, isn't it? I don't, I can't remember coming here, so... Well, we, it was the very first time we came and stayed in a cottage and we drove around Loch Ness and we stopped here on a similar sort of weather day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you take the good with the smooth with uh, Scotland, don't you? But I don't remember all this. It just, it just seemed to be at the side of the road. And yeah, there's a huge car park here for cars. Yeah. We parked in the coach park, which is where they told us to park. Yeah, normally that would be full of coaches. Well, so the car park's fairly busy here. Yeah, we have to get a car park park a car park pass as well as a book your ticket. Yeah. yeah otherwise, I don't know what you do then. You haven't got one of those. Yeah, five night, five hundred year history. We have a visitors centre here. I presume you can go in the visitors centre. So. Normally eight, twelve pound. Concessions nine pound sixty. We're in free because we're in the. English, I think it's the English Heritage. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's historic Scotland. Historic Scotland. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only support and assistance dogs only beyond this point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They've seen our tickets. Yeah, scan them, didn't they? Scan and them, the yeah. code. We're heading down. It's quite steep here, isn't it? Yeah. First glimpse through the trees. Hmm. They've got some boards up here you can have a look at as well. Toilets, yeah, it's so the until 11, opens anyway. at 11, so we might not grab a coffee later. Family meal deal, 15 pounds. Uh, it's 
this for centuries lowland writers despised the highlands as barbaric and back backward in the 1800s a romanticized version of gallic culture was embraced as authentically scottish tourists tourists began to seek out Urquhart. Its iconic status enhanced by wars of chivalry and defiance during the wars of independence the cursed chamber here it says mm. in the 1100s the gallic noble lord connor uh, something <laughs> gained a secret hold over local witches forcing them to build the castle for him another claims two chambers are hidden under Urquhart, one filled with gold the other plague oh nice yeah. <laughs> so it's his fault then yeah so the famous castle of Urquhart. It's all, it's all about what's there that's, that's the grant tower the gatehouse uh, the Great Hall, Watergate, that's where everyone came on boats, obviously, and uh, the Citadel. So that was the core of the first castle built on top of an ancient hill fort. So first that bit there. there is the, yeah. the first part of the fort. That was the hill fort, oh. and that bit there is the Grant Tower, and that was built um, on the original 14th century donjon. donjon? Donjon Tower. We've got a trebuchet here. That's quite something, isn't it? Yeah. I assume that's where they tie it back on. That's quite something, isn't it? Yeah. It's a huge trunk they've used. Of the ball. Wow. Well, you've won far one of these. Yeah. Wow. Oh, imagine those things being chucked at you. Yeah. Oh, I just say, yeah, all right, you can have the castle. <laughs> I just want to turn up with one of those. Yeah, that's it. I give in. <laughs> yeah, be hurling rocks that size. Make a big hole like over there. Yeah. Oh. You might want to go down the path, but I'm going to go for it here. To be honest, I wasn't sure what to expect with this castle. No. I just didn't remember it. I thought we just turned up and we wandered around the outside of a bit of a ruin, didn't we? Well, I think that's all it was when we first came. And then I think every other time we've come past it, it's just looked so busy that we've just carried on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we just sort of would dump the car, park the car there somewhere here and just walk around there. Yeah, yeah, no, possibly. No, it certainly wasn't all these paths. No, no. So they've done a good job here, haven't they? Yeah. There's the hill fort. A little bit to read here. Just try and keep my lens clean. <laughs> so it says across the rock cut moat where a drawbridge once stood to explore the ruins of the largest medieval castle in Highland Scotland. It's got a gatehouse, sturdy defences and prison cell, the trebuchet, citadel where ancient walls once repulsed attackers and the Grant Tower with stunning views over Loch Ness. Yeah I mean it's a pity obviously we haven't got the the blue skies and everything but I think it sort of gives it some atmosphere really yeah I'll put some spooky music on this <laughs> yeah great lumps of wall here that's bits of wall that have collapsed Yeah, so this is about destroying the gatehouse. It says blocks of masonry were thrown here by an explosion in 1692 that ended the castle's long military career. Its garrison was deliberately destroyed. This garrison deliberately destroyed the gatehouse to prevent the Jacobite enemies from holding the medieval fortress against them. They then abandoned Urquhart, and that was the end of it as a military fortress. So 
300 Highlanders led by Captain James Grant were besieged here. They held the castle for Queen Mary II and her his husband King William against a force of 500 Jacobites seeking to return her deposed father uh, with the James the 567th to the throne. Despite holding out, the government forces ultimately decided that the castle was not worth defending. Parliament granted the Laird Ludovic Grant £2,000 Scots compensation for the damage but the money was never received and Urquhart was never repaired. So this is about the gatehouse which protected the weakest point in Urquhart's defences, its main entrance. Thatcher's had to negotiate the rock cut ditch that was crossed by a drawbridge. Yeah, we'll see where the pillars once yeah. fitted either side of the modern bridge. Entrance portcullis was blocked by an iron portcullis that was lowered from above along deep slots. Deep oh, nice. See what that is? There, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, there. there. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the portcullis was there. Yeah. And rocks and other projectiles could be dropped through mur murder holes in the wooden ceiling onto the heads of anyone who got past the portcullis. These defences withstood many sieges, including an assault in 1334, when Urquhart was one of just five Scottish castles to hold out against the English invasion. <laughs> yeah, you can see how it held out. So this is the Great Hall. So this is where the Lord of or his constable entertained guests and showed off their wealth and status. Is also where they administered justice and local government. This is some of the most powerful figures in medieval Scotland died in this great hall. Yeah. In 1342, Sir Robert Lauder, Edward Constable, entertained King David II, son of Robert the Bruce, William Earl of Ross, and the bishops of Moray, Moray and uh, Ross. Ross. Uh, all the great and good were in there. Yeah. It says, look above the ruin cellars for holes in which massive timber beams were once slotted supported the wooden floor of the hall while the large blocks of masonry carried the hearth. It says after the party the hall was replaced by a less substantial building in the early 1400s probably after being wrecked in an attack. The great kitchen, the great chamber and kitchens were abandoned. There's a chapel here as well. So the rocky knoll above you, the foundations of what may, been, what may have been Urquhart's castle, oh, chapel rather. The Laird and his family needed somewhere to hear Mass and receive communion. It may have been a place of worship even before St Columba's visit to Urquhart in the 570s. The chapel stonework dates from the 1200s. Barely two cent centuries later it seems to have been levelled to make way for an artillery platform. Highland meals may have been prepared here for the residents of the Grant Tower. So it was a small complex added to the castle when it was rebuilt in the 1500s. The old kitchen block had been demolished by this time following repeated attacks on the castle. There were two fireplaces maybe too small for cooking, raising the possibility that Grant's kitchen, family kitchen, was somewhere else. If we're going about slow cooker, that's a slow cooker. <laughs> Uh, nothing's new, is it, really? No. <laughs> Good time, Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. Yes, this is the Grant Tower, built some time after King James III gave Urquhart to John Grant of Frucci. Frucci? In 1509, reward for supporting the monarch in his struggle against the MacDonald Lords of the Isles. Oh, there's a bit of a roof in here. I don't know how much of this you'll see because it's a bit dark in here. I can't fit my light because <laughs> I'm trying to stay waterproof. Can't go further up there. But we can go up here. Would have stunning views over Loch Ness. Yeah. 
A long way down. So these are the this is the private chamber. So he probably entertained his close friends on the first floor on the first floor and had his bed on the second. Servants slept to, probably slept above. They're based in Stress Bay. Took over a distant estate, racked by clan feuds, raiding and lawlessness. And consolidated the castle around. It's the family consolidated the castle around this tower after the final MacDonald attack in 1545. Parapets and turrets were added in the 1600s. So I think they only stayed occupied till 1644. Yeah, it says the, the last noble resident of Urquhart was Mary Ogilvy, mother of James Laird of Grant, an unpopular landlord. She described the locals as navies and uh, was chased out when an armed band ransacked the castle in Christmas at Christmas 1644. Once abandoned, Urquhart rapidly deteriorated and the south wall of the tower collapsed during a storm in, 15, in 1715. In 1912, the castle passed into state care. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Go down these stairs, presumably. Yeah, your views over Loch Ness. Filling up with water there. there. <laughs> and I negotiate the puddles as well. Yeah, so this was the great kitchen. Sights and smells of a great medieval kitchen where the culinary creations enjoyed by the 14th century lord and guests were concocted. So this is the discovery of an older kitchen, rubbish heap in the citadel gives a glimpse of Urquhart's castle, Urquhart's rich menu. Featured venison, beef, mutton, goat, po pork, chicken and fish, oats, barley, hazelnuts, crab apples, raspberries were found just beyond the kitchen walls. It actually says that uh, this, although there's fish in Loch Ness, it says the wealthy inhabitants actually preferred North Sea cod and halibut to locally caught salmon and trout. Oh. Talking Probably. about that raid. But... Oh right, a great raid of 1545. And this was where a MacDonald-led force stormed Urquhart. And over the next month, they systematically stripped the castle in Glen Urquhart of everything of value. Loot was carried away down the Great Glen. They burned what they couldn't take. They even took the locks. They said the plunder stripped from the castle included, uh, with the bow stairs, 12 feather beds, bolsters, blankets, sheets, five potties, six panas, two brew of Calden. <coughs> two brew of Calden. Oh, I can't say that. Five pots, six pans, two brewing vats, one basin, six roasting spits. Locks, doors, iron gates, tables, beds, chairs, and three great boats. And that was their takeaway menu. 
They didn't leave a lot behind them. No. <laughs> no. They basically took most things. <laughs> They're taking away armour here. Look. This was the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> What's left of it? What's left of it, yeah. What remains after the Great Raid? <laughs> yeah, so the stables were here. And it says riding horses or corsairs. Corsairs carried nobles, pack horses or cattles, hauled loads, pulled carts, dragged ploughs. It said when the Lord and Lady set out on a journey, capels carried their household belongings, even their beds. The famously strong Highland horse of Garan was well suited to the task. And the medieval knight needed a powerful war horse, but in the rugged Highland terrain, cavalry was vulnerable to Gallic warriors who preferred to fight on foot. Well, I think with sort of you know terrain like this, and yeah. Repairing clothes, uh, wood being made into furniture. It says more than half of the animal bones found in archaeological excavation in this area were from cows. C cattle were a form of wealth and a symbol of status. Until the mid 1700s, cattle rustling was common between the rival Highland clans. Glen Urquhart's herds were raided many times. There's Urquhart Castle as a jigsaw puzzle with most of the pieces missing. Walls have been demolished and new ones raised many times during the last 1500 years. Timber builders have rotted away. Locals plundered the castle. And stonework was robbed. Between 1912 and 22, after the castle passed in state care, the ruins were cleared of rubble and clump crumbling walls were consolidated. Well, well-intentioned, this work removed important clues to Urquhart's past and many of its buildings. So there's a bit of a puzzle, a lot of it. Yeah. Ducot in here. A dove grove. There's Ducot. Yeah. Dove's way. Pigeons. No, pigeons. pigeons it is. Yeah. You had to have a, a grant. Jordan Grant was required to build a dove grove under the terms of the grant of Urquhart in 1509. It was well placed by that time. Well, it was well placed in what was by this time a quiet little used part of the castle. So, I mean, we've been in dovecots before, haven't we? Yeah, at, at that castle. At Dern Dalton, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going in it. Yeah, no, I've been to Dalton Castle. It's a more complete one, isn't it? Yeah. Not much of it left here. <laughs> yeah, this has uh, transformed many times during its long history. Shaped and reshaped by viewers, viewers, by its owners, changing needs and circumstances. So 500s, it was a hill fort. And the first castle was built around the 1220s. Stone shell keep protected the timber buildings. The castle became a strategic fortress in the wars of independence with its mighty gatehouse and donjon tower built to the north of the citadel defending, defied the English invaders. And many of the castle's buildings were ruined during the 150 years of struggle between the Macdonalds and the Crown. And the citadel was re-fortified as it was easier for a small force to defend and the Laird's residence in the 1500s largely abandoned the castle south of a wall between the gatehouse and the water gate. So this bit really I suppose. It's quite a view that is, even on a day like today. I'm glad I came anyway. <laughs> Even with the weather. 
Yeah, it's a Zirkut, the Defiant. This is the oldest part of the castle, perhaps built in the 1220s by the Derward family. And the Sigil's stone walls may have sat on earlier Pictish fortifications. <laughs> <laughs> And it says that Alan Derwood, King Alexander II's capable right-hand man, administered the new estate uh, and met with local leaders in the castle. His presence at Urquhart helped extend royal power into the Highlands. The castle was surrendered to the English in 1296 when the vast army of King Edward I swept through the country. But soon back in Scottish hands it became renowned as a stronghold that the invaders could not capture by force had been greatly strengthened before the Wars of Independence by the more mighty Comyn family who took it over in 1270. They were staunch, staunch supporters of John, King John Balliol and helped lead the resistance to the English until they were crushed by their rivals, Robert the Bruce. Besieged again in 1303, hero, heroic constable Alexander de Forbes was slain while leading a desperate attack on the enemy before the castle walls. King Robert the Bruce recaptured Urquhart in 1308. So it is an awful lot of history here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, brilliant castle. We must come back here when the weather's a bit better. But yeah, you can see the mist on the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the Watergate, a gate linked to, uh, to the outside world where roads were almost non-existent. It was easier for people to travel along the lock by boat and everything. The castle needed came through the Watergate, including exotic imports like oranges and wine. And the siege garrison in 1689 held out with supplies smuggled in here. It was also a weak spot so that raiders travelling in galleys could actually explo exploit yeah. Steps are a bit wet as well. Right, so it's down to the shore. Sounds like the visitor centre, oh, sorry, the exhibition centre is closed. Yeah. So, well, I'm glad I came anyway. Yeah, yeah, enjoyed it, despite the weather. Yeah. Yeah. There's people up there. Yeah. <laughs> Come on then, let's go and get dry. They're feeding on in the van, so. Yeah. So give us a thumbs up because we got very, very wet. wet this, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and leave a comment. Um, what did you think of Urquhart Castle? Is it somewhere you'd like to visit? Have you been here before? Perhaps in better weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully you have. And should we come back? I think we should. Yeah, so we'll see you All soon right. then. Bye, Bye. then. <laughs> Oh, it's nice and warm in here. Come on in. The wonderful thing about having a motorhome is that you come back to a nice warm place where you can dry off, get a change of clothes, have a cup of coffee, Right through the coat. Yeah. Yeah, you have to get to better coats than that.